Once upon a time, me and some friends were at a park, and we were sitting on some bleachers. I look down to notice that the grass is particularly green that day. I decided to verbalize this fact, and in the middle of conversation, I look to my friends and go, wow, the grass is really green today which led them all to question my sobriety. So today is gonna be a little bit of an educational video uh, prefaced with that funny story because maybe the topic explains it. Maybe, I'm not tested so I don't know. Topic of today is tetrachromacy. It's a really fun word. Color vision comes from the cones inside of your eyeballs. They are cells that are triggered by different wavelengths of light. Each cone is able to pick up on a hundred different shades. Most humans have two or three, so they're either dichromates or trichromates, respectively. Dichromates are able to pick up on 10,000 different shades, and trichromates are able to pick up on a million different shades. Then there are tetrachromates, who have four cones and are able to pick up on a hundred million shades. That's pretty awesome. And because perceiving color is a personal experience, we don't individually know whether we're dichromatic, trichromatic, or tetrachromatic unless we're presented with tests. I'm sure you've all seen colorblind tests. All mammals used to be tetrachromatic, but over time we've lost either one or two of our uh, cones, and that most mammals are now dichromatic. In 1948, a Dutch scientist by the name of De Vries, Vries, he was doing an experiment on colorblind men who have two normal cones and one mutant cone. So they have trouble distinguishing between red and green. Out of curiosity, he decided to test the daughters of these men. Through testing, he found out the daughters have three normal cones and one mutant cone, making them tetrachromatic as would the mothers of these colored blind men. Then, in 1980, a neuroscientist and his advisee decided to start testing these women that were tetrachromatic. Using a test that involved three circles, one of which only a tetrachromatic would be able to notice a difference in, they tested 25 women, and one of them got every single question correct, making her the first documented tetrachromat. A lot of tetrachromats wouldn't even know they're tetrachromatic, because of the fact that the world is tailored to trichromates, so the colors in between these shades that tetrachromatics can see don't really exist in manufactured products. There's also a confirmed tetrachromate in California, who I watched some YouTube videos on. They are really interesting. They don't really talk about tetrachromacy as as what it is. They talk more about her experience. The way that she's describing things leads me into kind of the main reason I made this video. I think I'm tetrachromatic. When I first discovered what tetrachromacy was a couple years ago on the internet, I took some tests and all of them kind of confirmed my suspicions. Plus I have a parent that is colorblind, so that kind of is right in line with me maybe being tetrachromatic which would be really awesome, but I think it's really cool to think about because I really like eyeballs. They're probably one of the most interesting parts of the body to me. I may be one of those 12% biologically female people that have an extra cone and can see all these colors. It's just a cool, a cool thought to have. The fact that we see things all differently is so awesome to me because you can just sit anywhere and think about the fact that you are having your own completely alone experience looking at the world and that that is a giant metaphor for how our brains function too in terms of thoughts but just the fact that th biologically Scientifically, all those words, definitely, we are all experiencing life differently. Maybe, maybe a lot, maybe a little. Just, just vision-wise. That's so cool to me. 
My battery's dying, so I have to say bye really quickly. Bye, guys. There may or may not be a video tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. I read on Wikipedia. I read on Wikipedia.